Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. custodian for things bizarre. I have a tale for you this time that starts with violence and goes on from there. It will deal with the supernatural, but will also touch upon the dangers sometimes inherent in the natural behavior of which man is capable. Our mystery drama, Not for Sale, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Field and Farrington and stars Rosemary Murphy and Gordon Gould. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It only takes one glassful to know this beer. Budweiser is the king of beers. Ah, the crisp aroma of the choicest hops. And that famous snappy Budweiser taste that only the most careful brewing process and exclusive beechwood aging can deliver. And deliver it does. A smoothness, a drinkability, and cold, golden enjoyment you'll find in no other beer at any price. Anheuser-Busch Headquarters, St. Louis, Missouri. Here in my hand is a little capsule. It's content. It contains enough cold medicine to help relieve cold symptoms caused by every known virus. Think about that the next time you're sick. Sneezing, dripping, all clogged up. Then let us help you with real medicine, like contact. We're number one in the whole world. If you're cold, to contact. Real medicine for real cold. Take only as direct. Are you an elderly person whose hackles rise at the very mention of the words old age home? Then you're just the type of individual who might be interested in Sharon Manor. A retirement home for adults who think young, who live active, independent, outgoing lives. Does that sound like you? There are a lot of people just like you at Sharon Manor. People who have decided to take a vacation from the drudgery of cooking, housework, and shopping, and live a little. Using Sharon Manor as a home base gives much more time for the activities that are really important. Jobs, club work, charities, classes, visiting with your family and friends. It's a whole new world, not out of the way, but centrally located in the heart of Brooklyn, where life is happening all around you. So if you're in the market for a retirement residence that's up-tempo and exciting with a wide variety of activities and services, give Sharon a call. The number is 859-2400. Or you can write to Sharon Manor, Foster Avenue, and Ocean Parkway, Brooklyn. That phone number again, 859-2400. harder. At Avis, that's more than a slogan. It's a way of life, representing the innovation and pride that Avis has brought to the rent-a-car business. It's devotion to detail, big and little, from making sure the engine is operating efficiently to seeing that the ashtray is clean in our Chrysler engineered and other fine cars. It's doing those little extras that make your trip more pleasant. Basically, of course, it's people. People who are constantly trying harder to make things easier for you. Come to Avis. You'll see what we mean. Keep on trying, Avis. We try harder, Avis. Avis will know another way. Keep on trying, I've often thought that one of the loneliest jobs on earth must be running a one-man antique shop. 
The kind of little squalid shop where you never see a shopper entering or a purchaser leaving, but only the proprietor pecking about among his wares like a pigeon among stale breadcrumbs. I wonder how such a proprietor feels when a potential customer does enter his shop. Is he eager to make a sale? Does he resent the interruption of his pecking? Or is he perhaps just a little frightened? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I just thought I'd take a look around. Okay with you, Pops? Oh, yes, certainly. Feel perfectly free to browse. I'll just go on doing what I was doing. Uh-huh. Refinishing this old dry sink here. <laughs> Little sanding. Touch of glue should be as good as new. Beautiful old piece. Yeah, well, I uh, was thinking more about um, the vase, you know. Oh, there's a nice one in the window. Did you notice it as you came in? You run this place all by yourself, do you? <laughs> I don't get enough business to keep one man occupied. What would I do with help? You all by yourself right now? Except for you, yes. Well, I'll tell you what, Pops. I uh, changed my mind about the vase. I'll take the money instead. Are you... Are you holding me up? Now, what do you think? This uh, gun ain't no antique. Well, there, there isn't much in the cash drawer, I'm afraid. Well, let's look and see. Okay? <laughs> Not more than a few dollars. That all? Well, as I told you, I don't do much business here. Seven dollars and thirty-nine cents. You mean you mean this is it? I'm afraid so. Yes. Oh, you should have kept more in the cash register because it makes me mad. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to use this gun here. <laughs> Surely that won't help. It, w- it won't get you any more money, and they'll be looking for you for murder. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Oh, what good will that do? Go ahead. Beg me a little. I like to hear people beg. No. No, I, d- I don't think I care to. Well, then. Um... Sorry, Pops. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. How do you do? This is the Colfax residence. That's right. I am Carl Miller, a friend of Mrs. Colfax's uncle, Milo Phillips. I wonder if I might speak for a moment with Mrs. Colfax. Something about her uncle? Well, it's not good news, I'm afraid. Oh. Well, uh, Faye, it's somebody to see you. Okay. Come in, Mr. Miller, is it? Yes. Carl Miller. Well, come on in. There you go. Somebody to see me, you say? Say, this is Mr. Miller. Oh. A friend of your Uncle Milo's. How do you do? How do you do? I, I am afraid of some unpleasant news. Has, uh, has something happened to Uncle Milo? I'm afraid so, yes. I came myself because I, I believed it could not be so painful to hear from one of his friends as from a total stranger. He's not... He's not dead, is he? I'm afraid that he is. Oh, no. Oh, Brian. Easy, Faye. I'm sorry to bring such news. Someone, the police say, was robbing the store and shot my law. I, oh. I was the one who found him lying there. I live in the apartment over the store, and I heard the shot. Oh, poor Uncle Milo. Who'd ever want to kill him? Such a... Such a sweet old man. Yes, we were good friends, Milo and I. I live in the second floor apartment. He had the rooms upstairs on the third floor. We were good friends. Someone was robbing the shop, you say? Well, so the police believe. They couldn't have expected to get much. And perhaps were angered that it was not enough. That is happening sometimes these days. Do the police have any suspects? Not that they've told me. I... Uh, Mrs. Colfax, I am in possession of Milo's will. He's left all that he had to you. The shop? And all the merchandise. Also, he owned the building the shop is in. With a small building and not new, but I believe there's no mortgage. (laughs) You you are now my landlady. I, I just can't believe any of it. Thank you for coming yourself to tell us, Mr. Miller. 
She was very thoughtful of you. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. We shall meet, I should think, in a few days. Yes, and, and, and thank you, Mr. Miller. Oh, you're welcome. You have my sincere sympathy. Sorry about Uncle Milo, Faye. Just can't imagine anybody killing him. Uncle Milo. There was, there was never a more peaceable man, and what am I going to do with an antique shop, Brian? You sell it, I imagine. All I can remember of it is the smell of dust. The real estate ought to be worth something. It's not the best neighborhood. Poor Uncle Milo. Well, I've always wondered why I didn't marry an heiress. It turns out I did. I hate funerals. There wasn't much of a turnout. He was practically a hermit, Brian. Worked in the shop and lived in that little third floor apartment. His whole life was right there in that old building. At least he had one friend. I saw that Miller fellow at the funeral. Didn't get a chance to speak to him, though. Oh, driver, here it is. R- right here on the corner. Here you are. Keep the change. Okay, watch your step. There's a puddle here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the building isn't too bad. The trim could use a coat of paint, but I've seen worse. Mr. Miller said it was free and clear. I hope he knew what he was talking about. And the thing to do is get it on the market right away. I... Forgotten about the little bell. Oh, such a homey sound. Good Lord. It's a junk shop. It's not an antique shop at all. He used to have some nice things, though, mixed in with the junk. Look, he must have been working on this dry sink. It's a beautiful old piece, or, or will be when it's refinished. Which will be somebody else's job, not yours. I wouldn't mind. It's really kind of fun bringing old stuff like this back to life. For a while, anyway. You're kidding. After all, I don't have anything else to do with my time. Nothing useful. Oh, Faye, you don't want to take on a... Is that you, Mrs. Colfax? Yes, who is it? Uh, Mr. Miller? Uh, I was up in my apartment. I thought I heard the door open down here. I was a little worried after what happened to poor Milo. I I saw you at the funeral. Yes, we saw you too, but we didn't get a chance to speak to you. I I didn't go to the cemetery. It was too sad. For so, you you come to inspect your inheritance. Things are kind of disorganized, aren't they? Milo used to claim that he could, without hesitation, put his hands upon anything he wished, from a screwdriver to a couch that needed a reupholstery. Well, it's the next owner's problem, straightening out the mess. Are you intending to sell them? It's one of the things we're thinking about. We may or may not sell. I should like the privilege of making you the first offer. You'd be interested in buying the shop, the building, the whole thing? Well, I've lived in the second floor apartment for some time now, and I should not like to move away. Also, I I don't like change. What would you do with the shop? Well, I believe I would leave it much as it is. As I said, I, I don't like change. I myself am not an antique dealer... But it must be possible to find someone who would manage such a shop as an employee. Well, we, we haven't made up our minds whether or not we want to sell. Say. I haven't made up my mind yet. It's my belief that such a place as this is, well, in such a neighborhood would not be suitable for a young lady. After what happened to your uncle, I think he's right, Say. Well, I, I, I haven't made up my mind one way or the other. Well, I should like the first refusal, however, if you do decide on selling... The price would not greatly concern me. I mean to say, I would be able to meet any other offer you might entertain. I think we can promise you first refusal. If we decide to sell. Well, I will leave you then to complete your inspection. I do advise you to sell, however. I'll remember that. It would be a move you would never regret. Selling. You'd be very sorry indeed if you decide the other way. What did he mean by that? Just that he thinks you ought to sell. To him. I don't know. It sounded almost like a threat. That's the way it sounded to me. Delicious. 
I don't know how you'd be at running a second-hand store, but you make a fine dinner. It's not a second-hand store. It's an antique shop. At least it will be if I take it over. You make it sound as if you actually mean to go into the junk business. I haven't decided yet. And it won't be the junk business, not if I go into it. Uh, well, I'd better be on my way. Do you really have to go out tonight, Brian? Well, this man I'm seeing is considering taking out a group policy for over a thousand employees. If he wants to talk that kind of insurance to me, I'm his man. Eight o'clock at night or four in the morning. I guess the commission on a deal like that would be pretty big, wouldn't it? Like new living room furniture? You know something? I'll bet we could refurnish our living room right out of Uncle Milo's shop. A little refinishing here and there, some reupholstering. Oh, I'll bet we could. <laughs> I'm getting out of here right now before you have a chance to say another word. Okay, bye. Don't be too late. I'll wait up. Didn't take that long. Bye. Is that you, Brian? No, it isn't, Brian. Then who... Where are you? I... I can't see you. I know. It's your Uncle Milo, Faye. Uncle Milo's dead. We... We buried him this afternoon. Yes. All the same, I'm your Uncle Milo. A... A ghost? I guess you'd have to call me a ghost, yes. You're not frightened, are you? I... I am a little bit. Don't be. I won't harm you. What? What do you want? Why, why have you come back? I want you to sell the shop and the building. But do not sell to Carl Miller. I, sh I should think you'd want me to keep the shop. No. It's safer to sell. Everybody keeps talking about my safety. And if I do decide to sell... Why not to Carl Miller? It's for your own safety. You mean because of what happened to you? Because of the holdup? It was not a holdup what happened to me, Faye. Not a legitimate holdup. That young man was sent to my shop not to steal, but to kill me. <laughs> that if you want a woman to do something, you must advise her strongly to do exactly the opposite. If this is true of Faye Colfax, then nothing will keep her from going into the antique business. Mr. Miller has advised her against it, her husband, and now even the ghost of Uncle Milo has joined the chorus of negative advice. So, what will her decision be? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Two. Until now, a do-it-yourselfer needed a vice to hold his work, a workbench to hold a vice, and the space to fit the workbench. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you that True Value Hardware Stores can help you change all that with the Black & Decker Workmate. It's a portable all-purpose workbench, vice, and more. It adjusts to hold wedge-shaped objects, pipe, even irregular and bulky items like bicycles for repair. Yet it weighs just 32 pounds and folds to the size of a collapsed lawn chair so you can take the workbench to the work. See the Workmate portable all-purpose workbench at True Value Hardware Stores. And while you're there, check out their selection of Black & Decker power tools, like the 3 8 inch power drill. It drills through 3 8 inch steel or 3 quarter inch hardwood. It's double insulated for electrical safety, and it's just $9.88. Black & Decker tools are just some of the values at participating True Value Hardware Stores. True value. It's more than just a name. It's their way of doing business. What's for dinner has an old familiar ring. Where does a mother go for the best of everything? What's for dinner? The family wants to know. Who's got the answer? Who's got the most to show? Shop right now. Money. And live across the street, that's my shop here. Shop right now. Shop right now. Hey, Mom, what's for dinner? Shop right now. Shop right now. Would you buy an imitation when you can get the original, the genuine? Of course not. 
Krakus and Atalanta brands, the originals, are genuine imported Polish hams. They are available at your favorite grocer, supermarket, or butcher. Krakus and Atalanta, the original brands, are the only brands of imported Polish hams to carry both the good housekeeping seal and the parents' magazine seal of approval. Insist on the best for your money. Fine, lean, great-eating Krakus or Atalanta brands of genuine imported Polish ham in two, three, five, or seven-pound take-home sizes. You can also buy these fine hams sliced from larger sizes at your deli counter. Krakus and Atalanta Polish hams have been imported for more than 25 years by the New York Commodities Corporation, New York. Available at all Acme supermarkets. seems to Faye Colfax that she heard the voice of her Uncle Milo, which is impossible, of course, because Uncle Milo died three days ago. He was buried only this afternoon. However, as Faye knows, the human mind can do strange things, especially when under stress. Did it happen, or did she dream it? Neither explanation is really acceptable. Is that you, Brian? Well, now, how many of your boyfriends have keys to... Hey, what's the matter? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Does hearing one count? What? I don't really know whether I did or not. I I guess it must have been a dream. What happened, Faye? I thought... I, I was sure I heard Uncle Milo speaking to me. Uh, I think the whole thing has been too much for you. I'm hallucinating. Is, is that what you think? I didn't say that. I think you're all keyed up. Your uncle's death and the excitement of inheriting the store and the building. and Well, you just sort of imagined you heard Uncle Milo's voice. Imagined? What's that but hallucinating? Well, how did your meeting go, Brian? Very happily. You could end up wearing mink. Of course, once you've sold your building, I guess you can buy your own mink. I don't think I... I'm going to sell it. Is that what Uncle Milo seemed to be telling you? To keep the building and manage the shop yourself? No, he was saying that I ought to sell, but not to Mr. Miller. Not sell to Miller? Why? He never got around to explaining. For my safety, he kept saying. Well, anyway, I, I've just about decided to see how I could make out as an antique dealer. If you've decided, of course, that's that. I still think it's a mistake. I can always sell the building and get out of it. Uncle Milo got out. I wouldn't want to see you do it his way. Brian? Are you asleep? Ah, I thought you spoke to me. Faye! Faye! Is that you, Uncle Milo? Yes, the decision you've made. Faye, you must sell the building. You must not try to run the shop. You'll be in grave danger, believe me. Why? What's so dangerous about it? I can only tell you that Carl Miller is mixed up in something you must not get involved with. Mixed up in what? That's all I can tell you. You must sell the building, but don't sell it to Carl Miller. Have no dealing of any kind with Carl Miller. Is that clear? If it's so dangerous for me, I, I think you ought to tell me what, what it is he's mixed up in. Eh? Hey. Hey, are you, you talking to me? No, I was talking to... Oh, dear. I'm going now, Faye. Remember what I've told you. But you haven't told me anything, hey. can't you? Faye, hey, what are you talking about? Oh, he's gone. Well, who's gone? You'll just have to take my word for it, Brian. It was Uncle Milo again, and oh. I didn't dream him. Faye, hey, you can't start believing things like that, or you'll be in trouble. All right, then. I guess I'm in trouble. <laughs> Bless you, Brian. Come here and look at the beautiful old roll-top desk I found. <laughs> I don't know how you can tell a roll-top desk from a used car under all this dust. I heard you sneezing. <coughs> I don't think this old desk was for sale. I think Uncle Myra must have been using it. There are some papers and things. Is that you, Mrs. Colfax? Here we go again. Yes, Mr. Miller, back here. 
I heard you again from up in my apartment. You're making an inventory. Nothing that formal. Just checking over what's fit to keep and what isn't. Does this mean that you have come to a decision? Yes. I'm not going to sell, Mr. Miller. This is a mistake. I assure you. You can keep on living here. Don't worry about that. Well, it's not as simple as that, Mrs. Colfax. There are complications here which I do not believe you would understand. Try me, Mr. Miller. I'm a fairly intelligent woman. I advise you to sell to me, Mrs. Colfax. The price is no matter. We'll pay you more than another would pay. I'm not going to sell the building to you, Mr. Miller. Well, you'll be sorry. I promise you, Mrs. Colfax, you'll be very sorry. Are you threatening my wife, Miller? I've made your wife a promise. I'll leave you now to think the matter over. That was a threat if I ever heard one, Faye. He's into something shady, all right. There is a kind of inventory here. I found it in the desk. Pretty well organized for Uncle Milo, too. A list of all this junk? Yes, under three headings. Saleable, needs mending, junk. <laughs> you see, he did know some of it was junk. <laughs> What's that scribble down at the bottom? In end table. Can't make the rest of it out. Let me see. In end table, Miller apartment. In the end table, in Miller's apartment. It doesn't say what or which end table. I guess we'll just have to go through all the end tables up there. I mean, if you thought it was important enough to give it a separate listing, I guess it's important enough to look for. In Miller's apartment? Here's something else. More inventory? No, bank books. Three of them. He had... Good Lord. What is it? There are three bank books here, and Brian, two of them have a balance of $20,000, and the third, $12,500. $52,500. Where would he get hold of money like that? It must have been his life savings. Let me see those bank books. Here. Oh, say, all these deposits have been made in the last five years. Each deposit for $1,000. He's got one for 1500 The last one. He must have been making a lot more out of the shop than we thought. No, he wasn't. I looked over the books he kept on the shop, and he was barely scratching out a living. Well, then... Where did the 50000 come from? There's only one logical answer, Faye. Whatever it is that Miller is involved in, Uncle Milo was in it, too. Hey, Miller, you trying to make some kind of a fresh air nut out of me? Making me meet you here in the park? It's the safest place. I don't wish the Colfaxes to see her coming into my apartment. Let me worry about these things, Eddie. They're not your duty. Okay, okay. Uh, hey, uh, how about my bread? Bread? Mm. Oh, money. In this envelope. $2,500. Okay. The second half of your payment for the Milo Phillips affair. I uh, did a clean job, didn't I? Uh, the cops, I uh, read in the paper, they're still saying it was nothing but a stick-up. Yes. I've sent a commendation about you to our superiors. Hey, you ain't kidding. You really did. I went so far as to recommend that you be sent to our special training school in South America. <laughs> you didn't know we have such a school there, did you? The only thing is, though, uh, I don't want to go back to school. You cannot go on to better things without training, Eddie. Espionage is like war. It is war. The soldiers must be trained. <laughs> Sounds like getting drafted or something. Okay, when do I start? Yeah, not, not quite so fast as that. You must prove yourself and earn the right... Well, I just did this good, clean job for you. What more do you want? Perhaps another good, clean job. Oh, yeah? Well, same thing? Essentially the same, but more complicated. There is a person who is refusing to do business with me and I think must be eliminated. I wish to buy a property from her and she will not sell. She? Would that make a difference to you? That this time it's a woman? Oh, why should it? So a woman. Who cares? Brian, are you home? Been home for half an hour. Where were you? I went to those three banks. Where Uncle Milo kept his money? That's right. It's all in there, in the banks. What did you find out? They've already been notified. They were all set, all, all three places, to switch the accounts over to my name. All they needed was my signature. We're rich. Oh. And I aim to put the money to good use. It's all going right into that shop. 
Uh, all that's necessary, anyway. Oh, easy come, easy go. Now, Brian, don't be discouraging. I know I can make it work. I have no doubt that you can make a going concern of the shop. The only thing is... The only thing is what? There's still Mr. Miller upstairs. We don't know yet what kind of shady thing Miller is into. And we're not sure, of course, that Uncle Milo was in it with him. But what if he was? What if we find out that money was illegally come by? Isn't there a chance you'll have to give it back? I hadn't thought of that. Well, I think you ought to consider it before you start actually spending the money. Hey, Miller. I wish you'd come away from that window, Eddie. Well, don't you want to know what I just seen out there? All right. What was it? She just parked her car across the street. The Colfax name. She's crossing the street. She must be on her way to the store downstairs. You will now have to stay here until she leaves. Please come away from that window. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, what's the matter with right now, Miller? You mean to do what is necessary with Mrs. Colfax? Sure. She's alone for once without her husband tagging along. I just as soon get it over with. There's no point in waiting. But in broad daylight? I don't want her left in the shop. I don't do too much like the other time with Mado Phillips. Well, I don't see anything wrong with leaving it there in the shop. I do, Eddie. And I'm still the one who decides such things. Hey, wait a minute. I got it. I got down there right now and I bring her up here. We keep her up here, dead or alive, I don't care which, until it's good and dark outside and things have quieted down some. Then I take the body out and dispose of it. I know where to get rid of it. You don't have to worry about that. I don't wish a killing performed in my apartment. Okay, so we keep her up here alive. I take care of her later, after we leave here. The thing is, we got her in a spot right now where we can get her without her husband getting in our way. What if he comes to meet her at the shop and finds she's not there? So he goes away. With her automobile parked just across the street for all to see. I bet there's a million cars just like theirs in this town. I bet there's maybe three or four in this block right now. What's going to make him think it's his car? In these matters, Eddie, it is not advisable for the upstart to take over from the professional. Who's taking over? All I'm saying is we got a good chance right now, and we don't know when we'll get another one like it. The longer she's walking around able to make trouble, the more trouble she's apt to make. I shall think it over. Hi, Mrs. Colfax. Oh, you startled me. Uh, what can I do for you? What you can do for me, Mrs. Colfax, is come along with me and not make any trouble. What are you talking about? Just come along with me nice and quiet. That's all you have to know. I will not go with you. Not even if I point a gun at you, Mrs. Colfax? Like this? Is murder cold and premeditated to be Faye Colfax's reward for her stubbornness? Firm-mindedness, if you prefer. Unaware that what she has pitted her determination against is an espionage ring. She is blocking the purposes of men desperate enough to plan her elimination. Whether or not her firm-mindedness can deliver her from this precarious situation is a question we shall try to answer when I return shortly with Act Three. A lot of folks say the only differences between beers are the names. Well, I know some people who wouldn't like to hear that. Because for 100 years, they've been Beechwood aging their beer to give it a taste of smoothness and a drinkability found in no other beer at any price. Why go to all that extra time and expense? They know you can tell a great beer when you taste it. You said it all. Anheuser-Busch, headquarters, St. Louis, Missouri. If your attic has less than six inches of insulation on the floor, you're being robbed every day without ever knowing it. To stop the under-insulation robber and possibly save up to 30% on the cost of fuel to heat and cool your home, inspect your attic. Then see your neighborhood CertainTeed building materials dealer or insulation contractor. CertainTeed fiberglass attic insulation will stop that robber once and for all. 
Hi, Ben Franklin. You look a little troubled. I've been invited to a wedding, and I don't know what to give the happy couple. An almanac, a Franklin stove. Why not pick out a gift at the new Franklin Savings Bank office in Yonkers? New depositors have 83 gifts to choose from. Uh, like what? Like a Sunbeam Mixmaster, a Hamilton Beach Blender, a matching set of luggage, or a set of farberware. With such a selection, I'm sure you'll find something you like. Well, those are wonderful ideas. I think that's just what I'll do. I'll open a new account at Franklin Savings Bank's new Yonkers office, and pick out a gift for the happy couple. Good thinking, Ben. You can even open your account by mail, and they'll hold your gift at the bank until November 30th, if you like. Why, what a good problem solver you are. Look who's talking. By the way, Ben, do you have any advice for the day? Never take a wife till thou hast a house to put her in. Thanks, Ben. Franklin Savings Bank at the corner of Yonkers and Kimball Avenues. Open Monday through Saturday. Gift program for new accounts continues until October 23rd. Member FDIC. Saturday, come see one of the year's most exciting thoroughbred races at Belmont Park. It's the $250,000 Marlboro Cup, the second leg of Belmont's new fall championship series. The great Forgo and Bill Shoemaker will be trying to duplicate their brilliant win of two weeks ago in the classic Woodward Stakes against one of the most powerful fields in racing. Probable starters include Honest Pleasure, Foolish Pleasure, Avatar, Intrepid Hero, and Dance Bell. It's going to be a race to remember, don't miss it. The relaxing country setting of Belmont's beautiful backyard. The live music of Tito Puente in the backyard bandstand. And all the beauty and excitement of thoroughbred racing at its very best. To feel it, you've got to see it. At beautiful Belmont Park. Music starts at 12.30. First race, 1.30. Most of us, espionage is a thing of two aspects, and the aspects are poles apart. The bad guys, their side. The good guys, our side. For years now, this has been a boon to writers, producers, publishers, and, to be fair, audiences. Well, it's the bad guys we're dealing with in our story, and they've got their hands on our heroine, Faye Colfax. Her husband is as yet unaware of her situation. Hello? Oh, hi, Barney. The Oasis at five? I wish I could, Barney. But Faye's spending the afternoon at that shop she inherited, and, and I promised to pick her up there. And I don't like to have her waiting around in that place. Right. Maybe tomorrow. Okay. Thanks for calling, Barney. It's me, Miller. Eddie, I got the dame with me. Be quiet. How can we be sure no one is listening? There ain't nobody here but just you and me and her. Go on inside, Mrs. Colfax. Just keep your hands off me. What are you going to do with me? Well, should I tell her, Miller, or uh, you want to let her guess? I told you, Mrs. Colfax, that you were making a mistake in not selling this building to me. Well, we must all pay for our mistakes. Isn't that true? And you two are going to have plenty to pay for. You've kidnapped me. That's what you've done. My dear Mrs. Colfax, we've only invited you up to my apartment, which you owned, for a cup of tea. Would you like a cup of tea? You brought me here against my will, and that's kidnapping. The question is academic. If it makes you feel better to consider yourself a kidnapped victim, then by all means do so. And what are we going to do with her, Miller? It won't be dark for a couple of three hours yet. It was your idea to bring her up here to my apartment against my better judgment. That's for you to keep her out of trouble until the proper time. Proper time for what? Well, I guess the safest thing would be to tie her up so uh, she can't make trouble. Tie me up? And gag her. I leave it entirely to you. I take no part in any of this. Okay. You get your hands off me. Help me, can't you, Miller? She's got about 20 hands. Oh, it's claws. I take no part. Okay, I'll have to do it my way. I'm sorry about that, Mrs. Colfax. Will you? I am. 
What's that? She's not at home. She's not here. So, where would she be? Oh. Eddie, I'm afraid the gag is too much for her mouth. I think she cannot breathe. So? One way or another, what's the difference? No, I told you, not in my apartment. So you told me. I said the best place is in your apartment, right here. Who's going to ask questions? I see a couple of guys carrying a used rug out of the junk shop down there. I say we do it right here. You will do as I say. Why? Because if you do not, I will withdraw my commendation of you to our superiors. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, uh, look, I, I, I didn't mean anything, Miller. I mean, a guy's got a right to an opinion, ain't he? Take the gag from her mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mrs. Colfax, if we remove the gag, do you promise not to scream or call for help? Nod, if the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see, Eddie, she nods. You trust her? Take the gag from her mouth, Eddie. Mm-hmm. Uh, that filthy thing you stuffed in my mouth. I was afraid I was going to be sick. Well, it's out now. You better not make any noise or I'll mm-hmm. slug you again. You just wait until I tell my husband about this. You ain't going to tell nobody nothing. You're planning to kill me, aren't you? As I've told you again and again, it was a mistake not to sell the building to me. how would it help to kill me? You still wouldn't own the building. But someone will inherit. Your husband, I should think. And he was in favor of selling. The whole time, that's what he advised you. Do you think he'd sell it to you if you... If you killed me? He'll not know that I was involved. Oh, don't you believe it. He's as suspicious of you at this point as I was. If anything happens to me... He'll know exactly whom to blame. She's snowing you, Miller. Don't listen to her. Why do you want to buy this place so badly anyway? It can't be you just don't want to move. Nobody kills people just to keep from moving out of an apartment. It would be a matter of considerably more complication than only moving myself and my furniture out. I think you're talking too much, Miller. As you have said, she will be unable to repeat what I've told her. I believe we owe her something. At least to know the reason for... What we must do to her. Okay, you're the boss, but I still think you're talking too much. You see, Mrs. Colfax, this apartment is the center of a very complicated organization. It would be most difficult to move such an operation to a new center. More difficult than committing murder? The sad truth is, yes. What kind of operation? Well, I am what is known as the control. Mello, are you crazy? She'll have to go. Even she must see that now. Makes no damage if I tell her eyes. I think it makes a lot of damage, maybe. You just remember, that's what I think. I am the control for a very large network of, what do you call us, secret agents oh. working for my homeland. And against mine. This must be the way of it. To be in favor of one thing in action must be against another. That is, unfortunately, a fundamental truth. You won't get away with it. My husband... No one to speak. We know you're in there. I hate it talking. Better, I suppose, to answer the door. You have your pistol, lady. You better believe it. I will. Yes? Oh, it's Mr. Colfax. Have you got my wife in there? Well, my dear Mr. Colfax, why would I have your wife with me? Why is another question. I asked if she's in there. Of course she's not. I am, Byron. They've got me tied up. What? Do you need to push me? I wouldn't have kept you out. Hey, what are they... They can untie me, Brian. You heard her. Untie her. Fair chance. I think perhaps it would be better. We might talk in a more civilized way. What's the point, anyway, Miller? Because I say so. You have your gun in any case to assure no trouble. I think better to release her and watch closely. You do it. I'll hold the gun. As you say. Are you all right, Faye? My hands are a little numb. How do you explain this, Miller? Well, very simple. They're spies, Brian. Both of them. They've admitted it. I'm sure they're responsible for Uncle Milo's murder, and they plan to kill me. Oh, I... What's the matter? Now they'll think they have to kill you, too. You shouldn't have come here, Brian. Do you plan to kill us, Miller? I suppose it will be necessary. Why, you... Watch oh. it, Buster. I just as soon use this gun now as later. What are we going to do? They can't get away with this. Is that you, Uncle Milo? What? What is this? Do we have a visitor, Faye? Yes. Don't make riddles. Is this a code? You spoke of Milo. Did I? Well, 
he's, he's been on my mind a lot lately. It, it's only natural. Don't answer me when I speak to you, Faye. Just pay attention. I'm not sure whether I can make a, a physical interference or not. Hey, why is she looking like that? Like, listening? If a poltergeist can do it, I think I ought to be able to. Wouldn't you think? What's in the end table, Uncle Milo? What? I, I, I was just admiring your end table uh, over there by the couch. No, no, not the one by the couch, Faye. By the ugly brown chair there in the corner. It's a list of names. Names of the agents he controls. She keeps looking that way, l- listening. It's none of your business how she looks. I will try to bump the arm that holds the gun. The young one, Eddie, is it? I'll try to bump his arm, and you'll have to tell Brian to jump him when the gun wobbles off to one side. Not now. I'll tell you when. There is something strange here, the way Mrs. Colfax looks. I believe, Eddie, we must do it now and here, both of them. No, Faye, no. Jump in, Brian. Now, the one with the gun. Hey, what the... Oh, oh, my... what... You... No! You're beautiful, Brian. Get the gun. I don't know how long the kid will stay out. Get the gun. I've got it. Here, Brian, I don't think I could do much with it. What's the matter with you, Miller? I'm shot. I'm wounded. Eddie shot me. Are you all right, Brian? Sure. He never laid a glove on me. How about you? I'm fine. You were wonderful, <laughs> Brian. You hit him so hard. I was angry. Oh. Hey, you're coming around. Oh. Listen, you two. I've got the gun now. And I'm willing to use it if you make it necessary. I'm wounded. I must be helped. You shot me, arm. You live. Uh, Eddie, you shot me. Why did you shoot me? Somebody pushed me. I, I, I don't know. Somebody pushed me. Hey, call the... Uh, I don't know, the FBI, I guess, if they're spies. Don't move, Eddie. Get on the phone, Fay. Don't forget the end table. That list of names in there could break up the whole spy ring. Can I talk to you now? Well, of course you can talk to me. Oh, you mean Uncle Milo. Yes, yes. No reason why not now. You're better than a poltergeist, aren't you? Well... Anyway. Well, the FBI has a list of names, and they have Miller and Eddie. Is there any reason why we can't go home now? Not one reason I can think of, and incidentally, several good reasons why we should. You've lost your best prospect, you know. I can't imagine who you're going to sell this old building to now. I'm not going to sell it to anybody. I'm going to make the antique shop into a real swinging place. <laughs> Uncle Milo has just reminded me that I have $50,000 to work with. Okay, I give up. Let's go home. Uh, I think I'll go home now, too. I'm very tired. An altruistic ghost. A ghost that comes back to set things straight. Not for himself, but for those it has left behind. Well, it's about time we had such a ghost story. Ghosts have been much maligned. They always seem to be chain rattlers and complainers, bent upon revenge. I think it's refreshing to hear about one who is on the side of the good guys. I'll be back in a few minutes. You know, some cars that are economical aren't terribly exciting. This certainly isn't terribly exciting. Well, you can't have everything. And some cars that are fun aren't very economical. This certainly isn't very economical. Well, you can't have everything. Ah, but the Opel Isuzu is different. It has things like a hefty overhead cam engine, rack and pinion steering, reclining bucket seats, and a short-throw four-speed transmission. Gee, a short-throw sounds like fun. Certainly does. Want to try it? Certainly do. Mm -hmm. 
good one. Now I'll throw you. And besides all that fun, the Opal Isuzu also gives you mileage you wouldn't believe. According to the EPA, with standard four-cylinder engine and four-speed transmission, the Opal Isuzu gets an estimated 23 miles per gallon in the city and a big fat 36 on the highway, bearing in mind, of course, the fact that your mileage may vary. Bob, we just passed another gas station. Yeah, and wasn't it fun? The exciting, economical Opal Isuzu at your Buick Opal dealers. What can cause hemorrhoids? Strenuous activity, pregnancy, constipation, change in diet. Oh, well, uh, pain and itching symptoms? Mm, sometimes. If you suffer occasional pain and itching of hemorrhoidal tissues, use Preparation H to relieve discomfort for hours in many cases. And Preparation H actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues caused by inflammation. Hmm. You know, I'll try it. Use only as directed. Preparation H comes in ointment or suppositories. Relieves pain and itch. Helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues. Gary Moore and Bob Maxwell highlight the year 1935 on this Saturday evening's edition of the Mighty Memory Mobile. 1935, the war in Ethiopia helped set the stage for World War II. On radio is the comedy of Will Rogers and Burns and Allen. All this and more is scheduled on this Saturday evening's Mighty Memory Mobile, following the news at 6 here at 710. Hello, everybody. This is Arlene Francis. And I don't know if you've been reading any of the interviews Diane Ladd has been giving out, but if she's anything like the way she appears in print, she'll give us a terrific program. The blonde actress, Broadway's newest sensation, she appears in the Texas Trilogy, has promised to meet me here tomorrow morning at 10.15, so please try to make it if you can, right here on WOR New York. been brought to justice and received deservedly severe sentences. Faye Colfax is the proprietor of a very successful antique shop, and she and Brian are in the process of living happily ever after. The apartment directly over the shop is rented at the present time to a nice young couple, but the small third floor apartment is kept vacant in case Uncle Milo decides to pay another visit. Up to now, he has not done so, as far as anyone knows. Our cast included Rosemary Murphy, Gordon Gould, Court Benson, and Jack Grimes. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Store's Contact the 12-hour cold capsule, and certaintied fiberglass attic insulation. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Theater was also brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. The preceding program was furnished by CBS Radio.